Hi, this is Pastor David. Welcome to Grace for the Journey. My prayer is that you will receive an encouragement, direction, and maybe a challenge from the scriptures today. I hope that you'll be blessed. Thanks so much for joining in. Today we're looking into Matthew chapter 25 and verses 31 through 46, Christ's own description of what things would look like at the end of time, the final judgment. The disciples in chapter 24 had asked him, what will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of the end of the age? And he gave a description there and he says that, that they will see, the nations will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and the elect will be gathered from the heavens. And today, as we begin in Matthew 25 and verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. We get a beautiful and glorious though brief description of what things would look like. The Lord with his angels, the, the believers of all of the centuries coming, it will be both awesome and terrifying because it also is the time of judgment. There will be the welcome of the, of the believers of all of the centuries. and There will be worship and honor and glory to Christ. But as we will see in the verses coming, it will also be a time of judgment. And whether this is a day or an hour, or it's an era, and maybe even a thousand years, this time of judgment, the multitudes of all of the centuries will be judged. At the time that Christ was here on the earth, there were probably 300 million, uh, 300 million people living on the earth at the time. Now you look at the United States with over 300 million people there. But all of the people of all of the ages will be judged. And then we see in verse 32, before him will be gathered all of the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shep shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. And then we see the, the rewards and the punishment, the obedient, and we see the rebellious. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, those those who are blessed by my Father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Our prayer has been over the centuries as Jesus taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And now he is saying, Come and enter into my kingdom for all of eternity. Jesus had given many invitations. Come, all that labor, all that are weary, all that have burdens. Come, and I will give you rest here on this earth. Come, those who are thirsty, come to me. He told his disciples, come aside and rest. And now he is saying, come, come into the kingdom prepared for you. Those who are blessed by my Father, those who know me as their Lord and Savior. Hebrews eleven six, it says that without faith it's impossible to please God, but he rewards those that diligently seek him, those that are earnest in following him. And here we see the invitation as he says, Come, come, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. A kingdom prepared for you. It's not just that there are vacancies in heaven, not just vacancies in the kingdom of God, but a place prepared for each of his that he calls blessed of my father, each one that he calls brother, that he calls sister. Each of his children are welcomed in to a place prepared especially for them. It was prepared on purpose. It was planned, purpose built, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He continues in verse 35, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. 
Continuing on in verse 37, Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick in prison, or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. So here the believer is saying, what? This is not us. No, not us. We didn't live in the, in the time that you were here, uh, the, the time of your in, in, incarnation here on the earth. We came after and we have followed you. And, and yes, we have acted in love and we've been privileged to serve the household of faith. And we've been privileged to serve the community around us, but we didn't serve you. And the king answers, yes, truly, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Do you see your value? Do you see who you are in Christ? And if someone serves you, they're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. See the value of being that brother or sister in Christ, that brother or sister of Christ. So they ask this question, what, who, who, who did this? We, we didn't do it. And Christ answers, yes, you did it to the least of these, my brethren, my brothers, my sisters. For each of us as believers, we have many responsibilities. And in Wesleyan terms, we talk about the, the works of piety, of prayer, of reading scripture, of hearing scripture, of, of Christian community, of fasting, of, of communion. And then there are the works of, of mercy. As we read here in these verses of doing good, of providing food and drink and clothing, of visits of compassion to the sick and to the prisoner. And sometimes we go one way or the other and we put the emphasis on one side or the other. And the danger of the, the works of piety is that we become isolated from the world, separated from the world. And one of the dangers of the works of mercy, if I can use that word danger, is that we can preach a social gospel where it's all about doing the works. It was interesting soon after Pope Francis became Pope. He said that we in the church, we have many good things that we do. We educate, we have hospitals and we heal the sick. We feed and care for the poor. Many, many acts of mercy, works of mercy. But if we don't preach Christ, we do nothing. We must preach the gospel. And as individuals, as a faith community, we must preach the gospel. And together we must live out our faith. And for sure, we must be that people of prayer, people who read and hear the scripture, who gather together in community, who fast, who receive the Lord's Supper, communion, but we also must be that people of works, works of mercy, doing good, taking care of people, feeding the hungry, giving a drink to the thirsty, providing clothing, those visits of compassion to the sick, to the needy, to the discouraged, to those in prison. And we see what Christ is saying here. We often take these verses and, and see it as a mandate for us in, in the church. And, and true enough, it is. However, it came first to believers. Christ was talking about taking care of his brothers, the brethren, his brothers and he, his sisters. He's talking about the kingdom of God and how we must take care of the household of faith. And yes, we do reach out to the, the surrounding community and to the world. But he's talking specifically here about my brothers, my sisters. Remember, as he had begun there, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. He's talking about the people of the kingdom. 
And we know Jesus went about doing good. He spread the gospel and he, he cared for many. And even before people came to faith in him, he brought healing, he brought comfort. And we must do the same. But he's talking to his followers. The household of faith to do good. They'll be marked by grace, compassion, acts of mercy. Good fruit comes from good trees. We continue in verse 41, And then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food, and I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a, a stranger or naked or, or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? And he will answer, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And we have a couple of things here. It is interesting that the the fire, the, the, the judgment, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. And so many times we have a message of, of judgment and true. And as we see from this passage and, and many more, there is judgment coming for those that, that do not trust, that do not put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But this place, this judgment was originally prepared for the devil and his angels. Heaven was prepared for you. Hallelujah. This place of judgment, whatever it is, whatever it looks like and whatever that judgment is, originally prepared for the devil and his angels, but now it will also be given to those who have rejected Christ, who have turned away, who have ignored the gospel, who have ignored the Lord maybe have persecuted God's people, persecuted the church. He will answer them saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to the least of one of these, you did not do it to me. The least of these. You didn't do it for the brethren. You ne neglected them. You hoarded, you ignored, you ignored the poor on the earth. Despised, abused maybe, the weak and the poor of the world. But above all, you've rejected Christ. The scripture says, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. But these ones he's talking to here are those that have rejected. They lived in the world, but did not show the kindness and the gospel of grace. was not a part of their lives. And sadly, in verse 46, it says that these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So there is a judgment coming. There will be a separation. And as we saw in the beginning of what Christ shared here, the sheep and the goats, the sheep into the kingdom of God and the goats into judgment. But this analogy this passage is not so much about sheep and goats, but truly when the Son of Man comes, when the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords comes, he will judge. And he will bring his punishment. But the location and the method of that punishment again, is not really the point. But what we're seeing here is that we need to look at the truth. We need to make choices. We need to hear God's call today. And we need to be obedient. And we need to respond to his grace. And we need to live out his grace in this world. As representatives of the kingdom of God. And then that day will come, as Jesus said, when his disciples said, what will it look like? When will the end come? When the Son of Man comes in his glory, 
he'll divide the sheep and the goats. And to those righteous, to those that have believed on his name, he will say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. He's got good things in store in this life as we serve him, as we trust him, as we know him through scripture, as we know him through prayer, as we know him in worship, as we receive from him, as we share together in the Lord's Supper, but also as we serve him. And as we serve him, we reach out to our brothers and our sisters, and we do good. Just as Jesus went about doing good, we must go about doing good. Bringing food and drink and clothing and encouragement, those visits. And also another part of those, of those visits. John Wesley said that Jesus, though he didn't say it, we get it clearly from, from his teaching and from his life. But in error, you recalled me to the truth. What a blessing when we can recall a brother, a sister to the truth. And when I was in sin, you brought me to repentance. We have a great responsibility to care for our brothers, care for our sisters, and guide them in their discouragement. We bring refreshing to the soul by the Lord and by his word. Sometimes people are in bondage. They're in prison. They feel forsaken. They feel cast aside. And we need to come alongside and visit them in that prison and encourage them in the Lord. All of the acts, the works of mercy, they're not about tick boxes where we just say, well, I've done all of this and I've done all that I need to do. No, we must do it in the, we must do it in his compassion and share his love and share his grace with all of those around. It's about telling others about the Lord Jesus Christ, that they'll come to the place where they know him and they will hear him on judgment day saying, come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore. Amen. Thanks so much for listening today. If you have a question or a prayer request, please email me. Let's be in touch. My prayer for you today is that God would bless you and give you grace for the journey.